welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Hello, folks. Over the course of the last year or so, I've had this particular individual contact me through various YouTube accounts and various email addresses. Uh, through my own forensics, I think it's one individual, it's one person, but they always ask the same goofy-ass questions. Now, I'm going to be very blunt in this video, so if you're faint of heart, you might want to shut it off now. Because it's not about being nice or anything like that anymore. Because I've tried that route multiple times with this individual. I've offered them consultations. I've offered them kuleana. So on and so forth. And it's like the sound of one hand clapping. Either they're deaf, they're stupid, or they're blind. I don't know. You pick one. Because they're obviously not open to hearing anything I have to say. Other, Or maybe they just want to hear me give them the answer that they think they want to hear, and none of the answers I give fit that criteria. So this is the, the basic topic that they always contact me about. They want to get money for their birth certificate. They think there's some sort of trust account that exists that has untold riches or wealth in it, and they want to access it. And they also think the live life claim is something that it's not. Now, that's the main point of this video, the main knowledge cultivation aspect of this video is that I'm going to go into what the live life claim is. Because, you know, even though I've done multiple videos on the live life claim and explained and given closure to it many times before ad nauseum, I'm going to do it again because there's a lot of beginners out there who, you know, 800 or so videos is a lot to wade through. So it's always good to put fresh content out there talking about the same old topics. Speaking of same old topics, this is the same old topic that this individual always writes to me about, always comments about, and which, by the way, every time I see something that has this topic in it, I'm going to block that account. Period. End of story. So from this particular account, they say, is this how you access your trust account? On the top portion of your birth, write accepted for value and lower half write ability of exchange as such. On the top portion of your birth, what? The top portion of your afterbirth? What birth are you talking about? Yes, I know. Probably birth certificate. But guess what? It's not your birth certificate. It's not my birth certificate. Think about what you're saying there. If something is mine, which I don't claim possessorship of anything. I don't claim to possess anything. I don't own anything. I am a steward. And I'm definitely not a steward of this birth certificate because it's not mine. I didn't create it. I don't have authority over it. It was created by someone else. That name on there is not my name. It's been attributed to me or associated with me. Yes, of course, but it's not mine. And it's not my birth certificate. So right off the bat, they're starting off with a false premise. A huge assumption. Anyways, that means that the rest of what they're going to say here is just so far buried in bullshit, it's laughable. Everything they're saying on here is complete and utter hogwash. 
And why they would contact me asking me this, I have no idea. Like I said, for the last year, they've contacted me using multiple accounts, multiple nom de guerres, asking the same questions. I have not one video on this channel, almost 900 videos. I've, I don't have even one single video talking about claiming a trust account. Not one. I mean, in the context that they're saying. For me, what a trust account is, it's an account of trust that I would have with a confidant or a friend or a family member. That's a trust account for me. All right? It's an account filled with trust, not what this person is referring to. So to top it off, they put this at the bottom. For in the fact name with the correct grammar is of the correct capture by the authorization and cancellation of the stamp, is it not? What in the blue hell is that? Is that their best shot at correct sentence structure? Well, let's take a closer look at it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, first of all, this is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, bullshit. A fictitious conveyance of grammar if not a fraudulent conveyance of grammar. Now look at this. It says correct capture. Think about that. A capture is an act of war. War negates contract. If you're trying to capture something, it means you're trying to take something by force. Take something against its will. Why would you want to do that? What type of volition do you have that makes you want to capture something else that doesn't belong to you and you have no business trying to kidnap. That's basically what it is, is kidnapping. That's why I say when I hear uh, Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, or Colin Russell Eiffel, Joey, J. Colin Gould saying they captured the flag, that's an act of war. David and Russell have both also said that war negates contract. So right there, they have created a contradiction, one of many contradictions, and that's why I say there is no correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, copyright, copy claim, on the 1 by 1.9 flag. They're just not only because of the capturing aspect of it, but because of the grammatical aspect of it. I've never seen a correct sentence structure, a correct, grammatically correct claim of copyright for that flag. Anyways, so get that psychological aspect out of the way. Now let's look, let's look at the grammar. For in the fact name with. Adverb, verb, adverb. Adjective, pronoun, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. Then we got correct hyphen grammar is an adjective, is, is tangible contract, adjective of, is a non-tangible contract pronoun. Same rule as up here. We got another 4-1. Then we have correct capture, which is an adjective. By is an adverb. I'm sorry. By is a pronoun. Again, another 4 1 scenario. And then we have authorization and cancellation of. So authorization is going to be an adjective and is going to be a conjunction given a value of zero. Cancellation is going to be an adjective. Of is going to be a pronoun. Another 4 1 scenario. And then stamp is three, is is four, it is one, and not is a dangling participle verb. And that is why it is not correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. It's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, bullshit. And so, again, I'm not pulling any punches on this one, not being nice anymore. I'm not being malicious or mean either. I'm just being straightforward to the point this person has been told again and again and again and again and again and again ad nauseum exactly why they should not be bringing this BS to this channel, exactly why they have not been successful with whatever they're trying to do. It boils down to correct grammar. Learn it or not. And they obviously choose the or not. Now let's get to the part of the video about the live life claim and exactly what it is. So you see this website here. 
this website is from the adjective pronoun Leon Edwards, Leonardo Edwards, sorry. And as you can see here, there is no correct grammar on this page. Although you might think there is if you're a novice or a beginner, but there isn't. Look at this name. Colon David hyphen win colon space Miller space live hyphen life space claim. David Wynn is a pronoun. Miller space live life is an adjective. Adjective pronoun. Claim is the pronoun at the end. This is supposedly a claim of the live life on Leonardo Edwards' page. And look at the grammar. The grammar is atrocious. First of all, these numbers have not been positioned. If numbers are facts, and facts must be positioned with position loadio phrases, then one is a pronoun, because there is no for the in front of it. There is no colon in front of it. Are we to just assume that a number is a fact? Well, if that's the case, why can't we just assume that everything else is a fact as well? Why? Because there is no assumption, presumption, and grammar, and that is why this is not correct sentence structure. Other examples. For this claim, it's knowledge of this live life is with this claim of the live birth name, and then colon, space, and then this. That is not correct. It's of the live birth name with the, and then on. How is on a positional? As I've said again and again, the four positionals are for, of, with, and by. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with, for is the cause, of is concerned, with is possessive, by is authority. What is on? What function is on? It's not the cause, it's not the concern, it's not the possessive, it's not the authority. What is it? And what's it congruent with? Off? So if you read this backwards, it says, off this date? How does that make any sense? Or within? What is within? It's not the cause, not the concern, not the possessive, not the authority. What's the, op what's, what's the opposite? What's the congruency of within? Of out? In the year. Out the year. Come on. This is amateurish stuff. Let's see, if, let's see if Leonardo knows what a live life claim is. What is the live life claim? We have to go back to what has previously happened... When we were born, our mother and father registered our birth with the registry office as an informant. This created a birth certificate. So you could say that a third party has claimed you and your estate, put your name into capitalization, making the name a dead entity, a nom de guerre, dead name, a pseudonym. Then we live our lives as a dead person, having been brainwashed from day one. Please watch my video with the David speaking about this. Negativity and his brainwashing with the chief federal judge. Okay, what is the live life claim? That paragraph gives absolutely less than zero closure on what a claim of the live life is. So this leads me to think that Leonardo does not know what a claim of the live life is. He has no idea what it is. He's starting to give clues as to why the instrument known as the live life claim would be necessary or created, but he never says what it is. So, never fear, dear viewer, I'm about to tell you what it is. A correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim of the live life is simply a document contract postal vessel court venue that gives closure to you as a live life claimant, as a living, breathing, live life creature. A live life. Not a dead life, a live life. Or as they say in the common law circles, a living man or woman. It is simply a document where three, at least three, you can have more, but at least three live life claim witnesses come together to autograph and thumbprint and certify that you are who you say you are. It also includes other facts about you, such as the date you were physically birthed into this domain, perhaps your gender, or other things about you that would not change. So the reason why I say that is because on my live life claim, I don't put my height, I don't put my weight, 
I don't put my hair color. I don't put my eye color. Why? Because those things change. I normally hover around 200 plus pounds or so. Sometimes I'm 210. Sometimes I'm 195. It depends. But it's not a fact that is solid and remains a fact. That's why I don't put it there. My hair color was once dark, dark brown. Now it's salt and pepper. My eye color, it can be brown some days. It can be hazel other days. My height, I was a little bit over six foot. But now I might be under six foot. I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why I only put things on there that are certifiable that I can prove with a continuance of the evidence. Now, the witnesses on the live life claim must be live life claimants themselves, and they must also possess, and I use that word loosely, they also must be a steward or have on hand their own claim of the live life with their own witnesses. Last but not least, in the copyright of, of the text of the document itself, the copyright copy claims section would have the live life claimant's name in there. No one else's name would need to be in that copyright copy claim section because the live life claimant is the only one that would have copyright of the live life. If there is anyone else's name down there, then they have now taken a piece of your live life and they basically own your live life claim or a piece of your live life claim. Also, it's a good idea to know the grammar mechanics, to know the flag mechanics, to know the postal mechanics and the banking mechanics. By flag mechanics, I mean you use the correct 1 by 1.9 ratio flag, Title IV flag, grammar flag. And in order to actually use that flag, you have to know the grammar. You have to have closure on the grammar. Okay? You have to have that correct constitution, correct grammatical constitution giving closure to that flag. Correct postal mechanics. You would have a, a stamp on there of a whole number value. No fractional values, a whole number. It could be $1, $2, $3, whatever. But it has to be a whole number. I myself, on the Live Life Claim, use a Red Fox stamp backed by gold. By correct banking mechanics, I mean there must be correct syntax on your document. Correct grammar using the four positionals. No particles of negation in your facts. All the facts, all the symbols, hieroglyphs, and everything would have closure in a dictionary. You would have to have access to it or include it with the document. And of course, the correct grammar mechanics. All your sentences would have to have the correct concatenation. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, period. Mathematically certified forwards and backwards. That is the basis of what a simple live life claim is. I've just given you closure to that. Now, of course, I don't mind helping anybody create a claim of the live life as long as they have closure on the grammar or at least a rudimentary closure on the grammar. I don't even mind being a witness to a live life claim. And that's another topic. I'm glad I thought of that because I would probably would have forgot to mention it. The correct witnessing of a live life claim. Since the beginning, since 1988, when Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller brought this grammar to the public and published it, the live life claim needs at least three live life claim witnesses. That's trust law. In the fiction, that's known as trust law. One is opinion, two is certification, three is authorization. If someone tries to tell you that you only need one autograph on your claim of the live life, one witness, they are wrong. And they're lying to you. Matter of fact, they're probably trying to sell you that document. If you're going to have a witness on your claim of the live life, they have to witness you. Do you know what it means to be a witness? It means you see something. It means you hear something. You witness it. Okay, so at the very least, if you're going to have a live life claim witness, you have to at least do a video consult with them. You at least have to see them, talk to them and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you are a living, breathing creature. You are who you say you are. That's witnessing. If you don't have that type of proof, 
then you don't have a correct witness. And if you try to use your claim of the live life, it's probably not going to turn out the way you think it will. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you don't think it was too harsh. Even if you do, well, I have my reasons for doing it, especially the, the first part of it, simply because that person has been told again and again and again and again, and they just don't listen. So, thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.